York's most historic cabaret theater. For the consideration of the performers, we ask you to please silence your cell phones and also we'd like to let you know that flash photography is prohibited. Flash photography. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Ben Fisher and Jay Jordan. We got started on time just like that. <laughs> the one thing we value is your time. The more things change, the more they stay the same. How are you guys doing this evening? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We are your hosts this evening. I know you guys are not used to this hosting. Some of you, most of you travel probably. Uh, but we are going to be the hostesses, the hostesses, and that's just Joke. So what happens is that we come on stage and we prepare you guys to see the Queens and to see a night of fundraising comedy for the Rambler Soccer Club. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Clap it up if you were here last week. This is my most consistent relationship. He is lying. He's with his pharmacist. That's. <laughs> This early. This early. Uh, we have a fabulous evening for you. We've got some uh, comedians. We've got our fabulous guest panel of judges. We have Sean Kylie. Stand up. Make yourself known. And Lavinia. You need to come up on stage for just a second. You just have to. He doesn't like attention. All right. And all over Of course, our special professional, Wendy Waxwood. Yeah. A beautiful vest made from Betty White's pubic hair. Wonderful. Wonderful. Betty grew that out all winter. Uh, and how can we, we can't forget to introduce uh, our DJ with a rotating name. This this week it's MC Circumcised. Most cut. He's yeah. the most cut circumcision. Uh, here's the, okay, here's the reason he's called DJ Circumcision. Because like his, his music taste is kind of hood, but not. Does that make sense? Uh, <laughs> also, you guys have seen the penis. Okay, I like. Yeah. Talk about what you know, Jay. Talk about what you know. All right. And in honor of the uh, the Rambler's trip to Paris, he's circumcised, so there's no dick fromage. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. You're awing at dick cheese, not my joke. Uh, Jay, how was your week? Uh, it was wonderful. It's been a week since I turned 30, and it's been very successful. I know, I'm 30, which is like 70 for black men in this country, so I'm very happy. I'm in my twilight years. Uh, that just means I jerked off to a picture of Taylor Lautner before I got here. That's, that's what I was talking about. Team Jacob, right? Uh, now I'm trying to think what else happened. Oh, I, I found out that I will be headlining at Stand Up New York. Uh, July. July 13th. I'll tell most of you handsome faggots about it after the show. I'll give I'll give out information, my phone number, and my website for tickets. I'm headlining there, and I'm going to Miami on Thursday, but that's just to give head and do lines. So it's different. <laughs> Completely different. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna better than me. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what about your week, Benjamin? Um, I don't want to brag, but I did book a high-end yogurt commercial. So not Activia, which is rear end. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You I'm can not say a lot about him. Ben, but you can't say he's not cultured. Like you can't. 
<laughs> Alright, I'm the next Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, maybe I'll get to meet the Mogantics guy, that's my dream. Oh, he's a daddy. Uh, yeah, like, I don't have this many yogurt jokes. We get out of here. I have more. <laughs> Should I do some more? Uh, I like okay, that go here's the thing. I, I like that Gogurt is the only snack that makes your child give it a fellatio. That's that's like Gogurt and the uh, trainer. Oh, that's a homosexual <laughs> trainer. Yeah, that's a trait. That and the Flintstone push pops are what made most of you guys so good at what you do. Like that's what they did. I'm assuming. Who's parent in here? Daddy, raise your hand. I'm not a twink. I found that out this week. I, I mean, it's not this week, it's just like it's trending, but I'm not a I like the fact that like the New York Times released uh, uh, basically an opinion ad that was like, are we in the age of the twink? The age of the twink, and I was like, hopefully 18, unless someone's in trouble. Like, that is... Well, unless this is a Brian Singer film, 18. Oh, oh. oh that was they, good. That was they a good don't job. know him. They weren't in X Men. Like they don't know Brian. <laughs> you guys know who Brian Singer is? Yeah. He likes them when they sing, like the little. All right, singers. this is like, getting <laughs> long. All right, the first rule. That was a yogurt Robert. commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been so wonderful. What we want you to do is make just as much noise and get just as much attention to the other people you're gonna see on mm -hmm. stage today. But the first rule of soccer is that you always have. To warm up. So how should we warm up, Ben? We're gonna let you do some comedy, Jay. Okay. So cool. guys, give it up for Jay Jordan. We've seen him in Santa New York. Here at our team, though, and from New York, and I'm gonna do some comedy for you. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. And exit. Uh, <laughs> very snaggle puss. Exit stage right, even. So I'm very happy Danny's here. I like you. I like the fact that your name is DJ Circumcision. Danny is gay, I'm assuming. All right. I, I have eyes. <laughs> I'm aware. Uh, what I like about it is that you're, you're gay and Jewish, or as we call them in the biz, a Hebrew. That's what it's <laughs> what is, right? a Hebrew. Uh, I'm black and queer, otherwise known as a gospel choir director. Those are. Uh, if we were to hook up, you know what it would be called? A Brooklyn. That's what it would be. <laughs> A gay black guy and a gay Jewish guy get together. The best part about that is the dirty talk. It's so crazy because like he would like make me pay rent and I would um, I would make him build the pyramids. Like that's what would happen <laughs> if I was to hook up with a Jewish guy. I'm kidding. When a black guy and a Jewish guy hook up, it's called a beast. Uh, <laughs> or record deal, you guys. I would record deal. <laughs> Contract. Just one of those things, any number of things. I like that this is a very smart crowd. You guys are aware of a number of things. Uh, here's something you guys might not be aware of. Have you found out that there is a straight pride flag? Yeah, has anyone heard about this monstrosity? There's a straight pride flag. I'm kid I kid you not, there's a straight pride flag, and the colors are mauve, taupe, burgundy, graphite, charcoal, eggshell, and ivory. And I think it's a trap. Here's why. I think it's a trap, because if you're a guy, and you know any of those colors, bitch, you ain't straight like that. Like, if you're a straight guy, and you hear mob, you should think, that show from the 80s with B. Arthur, mob? <laughs> and that's another trap, because if you're a straight guy, you know who B. Arthur is. Bitch, you ain't straight like that. <laughs> I got you. We figured it out. Uh, I like teaching people about things. Uh, sometimes I do comedy for older people, and they don't know what us kids are doing, and they don't know about some of the new sexual techniques. A lot of people currently... Is this Simon's dad again? Laugh? <laughs> So, <laughs> you listen up, you'll learn something, older people. Uh, one technique that's become very popular, especially among gay guys, is say it with me, edging! That's right. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was about to say it. So, uh, what I like about edging is that I have to describe it to people, and edging is a sexual act 
of a pre uh, like approaching orgasm but never reaching orgasm. You're always approaching orgasm but never reaching orgasm, or as women call it, just regular sex. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ladies, I guess. I don't know which one to say. Uh, so yeah, I like it, and I like it so much that I tried to figure out how to make it analogous to joke. And so, if, if it, like edging for comedy, that would be if I gave you the premise for the joke and the setup for the joke, and then I gave you the premise for the joke. <laughs> Then I gave you the premise for the joke, and the <laughs> whoops. That's what edgy would be like. That's, not what, that's, that's what edgy is, just a matter of factly. I'm very excited. What's up? Love it. You have to find the prostrate. The, did you say prostrate at first? <laughs> <laughs> He's slurring. He's slurring. He's slurring. All right, sir. Yeah, the prostate. Women don't have those. You have one. I take it. It's probably are we being again? activated right now. Is that why you're so vocal? Is that, when I read on your grind you were vocal, I didn't know you meant at show. So just, I like him because you are, you are a very Caucasian looking man. Uh, like, he's like the kind of guy that's so white, if we raw dogged, I'd go to the doctor, like, a couple days later, and they'd be like, Jay, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to tell you. You tested positive for white privilege, and I go, what? Ah! Was it Cooper? Was it Connor? Was it Tammy? Uh, a drunk. I'm kidding, Irish. I said, what, 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 what is it? Is it Seamus? You said red hair. Uh, listen, are you Irish? I'll give you one more guess. Oh, uh, all right. It's my show, so I can guess as much as I want. <laughs> uh, all right, so hold on. Hearts, hearts stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and balloons. I don't know. What is it? That's Oh, okay. That'd be like if my name was DeAndre. That's too easy. <laughs> I know I look like Gay Malcolm X, but that's just because, like, you know, like, you had red hair. Hey, Malcolm Red, you're talking a lot, Pimp, but thank you. For that. I like this. I like, here's the thing. Here, you're Patrick, you're, this is gonna be too easy for me to do. I don't like stereotypes, but, uh, <laughs> I like, listen, no, I like Irish people because Irish people in America were black people back when black people weren't. People. So then you're doing very, but okay, like there's a, here's how whiteness worked in America. What happened is that there was this huge like Memorial Day celebration, all white, and they said we're gonna send out more invites, and they said, here you go, Italian Americans, here you go, Irish Americans, here you go, Jewish Americans. We're gonna take this back every 20 years to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Black people and Latinos, clean this mess up. Like that. And so that's what you're doing at my show right now. You are literally Brooklyning my show. Like a black person was here and you were like, hey, this place looks nice. How much is it? Like, just calm down. Uh, I love Patrick, I'll make it about me and him hooking up. So, uh, in life, uh, but in gay sex, what, what's that? What, 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 in the, in the, in the, in the No, in your ass, dummy, where are you thinking? Come on. So like I was saying, in gay sex, a lot of you guys already know this, but you have a penetrated partner that's called a top and a receptive partner that's called a Patrick. And, um, <laughs> I like hooking up with white guys because they put a whole historical socioeconomic spin on sex. It's pretty fun. So like when I talk Patrick, eventually, it will just be it won't just be regular sex, it'll be reparations. Right? I was supposed to get 40 acres and a mule, I'll settle for 15 minutes and then ass. But me because it's his birthday or something, then it's gentrification. It's just another white boy, privileged, moving into a predominantly black space. I knew it was getting bad when my ass opened up an artisanal coffee shop. 
<laughs> but now that Patrick's here, that place is so nice, the crime rate is down, it's clean, which is a really good thing, because that part of town used to be a real shithole. I'm Jay Jarrett. <laughs> Catch him all over the city. He's my birthday twin. He's the co-host of this show. Make a bunch of noise for Ben Fisher. Oh wow. Uh, which one is Patrick? <laughs> okay. My Irish family showed up. That's great. Uh, yeah, I'm Irish and Italian, which means I can drunk drive a Cadillac. That's cool. <laughs> I'm also an Italian bottom. I don't know if that makes me sound like a lady or a tramp, but I do like spaghetti. That's what that means. <laughs> uh, a lot of soccer players here, guys. Make some noise for my soccer. Right. Uh, what positions? Who's, who plays what positions? Anybody? Shout it out. First. There's, there we go. That's Patrick. <laughs> Just straight up midfield. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, give it up for your next comedian, Patrick, everybody. <laughs> Here he goes. Um, what's going on? What's going on, you guys? Uh, I'm trying to date. My, uh, my family keeps asking uh, if I'm dating. And I think in this day and age, I don't know how to tell them. It's just like so much easier to hook up. Um, dating requires me to iron a shirt, and I think what I need to say to them <laughs> is I can just clean my ass out faster. <laughs> how do you... How do you... How do you have that talk with your family? You know, that's cute that they care. That's cute that they're like trying to hook me up. They're like, you know, who are you dating? I went this this date recently. Um, it was with, a, it was like a rebound, like an ex, and we. Uh, I've never, I haven't been rejected this hard in so long, but we, which is funny because I'm hot. Um, <laughs> so we we went to dinner and uh, we're like. I'm like ordering a bunch of stuff, right? And I'm like ready to pay at the end. I'm ready to like split the bill, whatever. And the bill comes, he's dropping hints the whole night, like something's gonna happen. I'm like, okay, like I washed my ass out and now we're having tacos. So we've got a two hour window. But, uh, uh, so we're, we're at dinner and the bill comes down and he's like, he's like, I like go to put my card down. And he's like, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the tip too and like, I'm gonna pay a little more, which I was like, thanks, oh, thank you, Daddy. I'm like, uh, I'm like, this is happening. So we, we leave and uh, we're on the street. It's like right by my apartment. So I start walking like towards my apartment. Um, and I'm like, you know, I live over here. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> Ooh, right. So, like in that moment, I like he had been dropping all these hints in that moment I just like turned into Jafar as the old man from Lion King. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, give you your reward. Your eternal reward. Um, I was like, my cave of wonders, please. Uh, he was like, no. So that that sucked. I got rejected pretty hard. Um, at least I didn't get ghosted, but I don't think ghosting is that bad of a thing. A lot of people like talk about ghosting as a bad thing. And here's all ghosting is, okay? Ghosting is somebody's just getting to know the most intimate parts of you, and they'd rather be dead. That's all that is. <laughs> Yeah, but I am dating. A lot of guys, I've noticed a lot of men are so insecure about their penis size, and I'm here to tell you guys, like, I don't care about the length or girth of your penis, I just want to know how much it weighs. <laughs> For me, it's a density question. <laughs> All right, I don't care how long your dick is, I'm not shallow. <laughs> but uh, I've noticed a lot of men don't know the weight of their dick, which is like, outrageous to me. So. <laughs> You've never weighed your dick. Uh, okay. This one guy like landed at the airport on Grindr and he's like, he's like, wanna fuck? I said, how much that dick weigh? 
She said, I've never waited. I said, go to baggage claim. <laughs> It's lazy not to know the way you're doing. <laughs> they just swing into a deli, honestly. <laughs> no, I don't need any meat or cheese. I just need the use of your scale. <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> how, how, much is, how much does your dick weigh? I almost said your dick. I know how much your dick weighs. <laughs> you slapped me across the face with it earlier. <laughs> She's got a few different ones. Uh, but yeah, one guy at a show said that his dick weighed a pound. I was like, sir, that's a sack of flour. <laughs> Honestly, mine probably weighs a few sugar packets. <laughs> uh, I, oh gosh, I'm gonna go there. Patrick, how much does your dick weigh? <laughs> WBI, weight balls included. <laughs> oh, it goes up. Throw uh, it all in there. Maybe seven sugar packets. Uh, are we talking stevia or like Splenda raw sugar? Or like <laughs> raw sugar. That's my username. <laughs> okay, uh, you guys, we're going to keep things going. Uh, we're going to bring out your very first queen. Uh, but before we do, uh, I understand there's an announcement from the... From, I, See how I remember, like, yeah, I know, right? hours I later? <laughs> he was glaring at me. He was like, my dick weighs the weight of a microphone and give me, and so I can make an announcement. Sean Kiley, everybody! Thanks, Ben. Let's give it up one more time for Ben and JR hosting TV. So before we start our drag not a rumble this evening, we just want to make an announcement about our next event. It's going to be a fundraiser for Paris. This actually involves the NYCFC. We're going to do our next Pride Night. It is on June 2nd. Um, tickets can be, uh, the link to the tickets can be found both on our Instagram page and our Facebook page. Night's going to start on Boxers Upper East Side, which is 96th Street, just south of the last Q stop. Then we're going to take a double-decker bus to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. It's going to be a fun time, third, third year doing this. If you have any questions about the night, ask myself, ask Matthew LeBaron, who's sitting right there. Matthew, raise your hand. Yay! Uh, this is not just for the Ramblers. Please invite family, please invite friends, coworkers, anyone you think would have a good time celebrating with us, we would like to have with us. Thank you, Sean. Thank Everyone you. in this room will remember except for Patrick, so please remind him. Oh, this is my favorite position to be in right now. Uh, okay, we're gonna bring out your first queen. She is straight out of her own box. Give it up for Lady Curtain.
<laughs> You're thinking so far ahead about this that you picked a song to match your level of inebriation. <laughs> oh, Cole, if this, Thank you. if this were only something new that we've seen from you. <laughs> Thanks, Cole. Love you.